All right, everyone. So today I am going to be giving you my thoughts on the Nemesis, the latest killer in Dead by Daylight. He is from Resident Evil 3 Remake. It is awesome. I've been really having a lot of fun with him and this whole chapter. Uh, I have been playing a lot of Jill Valentine, a lot of Nemesis. I still have not yet played Leon. He's not exactly on my priority list. Um, but I think Nemesis is actually one of the most out of the gate, just balanced killers that I've played in a very long time. Uh, so much so that I can't even suggest anything for his base power. I think his base power is not only fun to play as and against, but he's intimidating. He's very, very scary. When you're playing him, you feel in control of the situation. You feel like you know, you're in charge, that the map belongs to you, that the survivors are afraid of you. It feels really, really empowering to play as Nemesis. And his power is strong. He is about the same strength as Deathslinger. I mentioned this on stream. I think that his power at loops is really, really strong. Uh, the ability for him to push survivors off of generators randomly because of zombies or to get downs outside of chase in random moments because of the zombies that are wandering around the map aimlessly is actually really neat. It reminds me a lot of Trapper and Old Legion. Trapper can place a bear trap, be on the other end of the map, and then randomly a survivor is going to get caught. Unlike Trapper, the survivor cannot just escape the bear trap, or in this case, escape the zombie. They go down, or are injured, or become infected. They use the word contaminated, but I'm going to say infected because it's, it's easier. Um, and I make the connection to Old Legion because Old Legion used to be able to use Stab Wound Study and Frank's Mixtape to get the timer to, what, like five seconds really, really quickly, and then just leave you. And you would run off, and then you would just go down randomly outside of chase some corner of the map. So that's why I'm making the connection to the zombies. I actually, I, 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 think, I think the zombies are pretty cool. Um, so yeah, Nemesis, great job, behavior. You actually made a killer that I think out of the box, great. I, I actually am perfectly satisfied with his, his power. I'm content with it. I don't have any issues with his ability, playing against it, playing as him. He's great. He's awesome. He's fun. Um, I do have an issue with his add-ons. And Behavior has once again pulled the twins, which is why I'm making this video, because I, every single time they do this, I'm going to make a video and just explain how stupid some of these add-ons are. Um, really, though, there's only one add-on that I'm kind of upset about. So I'm gonna make a few suggestions, talk about some of his add-ons and explain uh, why they're not good. I've used pretty much every single add-on now. After stream, I got a video ready that you just saw yesterday. And then I immediately went back into Dead by Daylight and started messing around with Nemesis and trying to add on combinations, new strategies, had a lot of fun, um, but yeah, I, I want to talk about some of his his add-ons, specifically his ultra rares. Uh, so I said I I said that the developers pull the twins. If you don't know this term or you're not familiar with my channel or you don't watch my Twitch streams, when I say the developers pull the twins, I'm talking about when they add really terrible add-ons of high quality or even low add-ons of low quality and give them meaningless status effects. An example with twins was the alt rare that would apply exposure onto a survivor. They would apply the exposed status effect for 12 seconds if they kicked Victor. Um, another one was when a survivor removed Victor, they got blindness for 15 seconds. Or, or oblivious for 15 seconds. Um, and this stuff really angers me. Because the add-ons are not strong. Nor are they fun. They're just there. Nobody will use them because they're just not worth the slot. Um, and we've seen that they are capable of creating some very fun add-ons. We have seen with recent killer reworks and updates with Huntress and her undetectable add-on. 
Demogorgon and Lifeguard Whistle. That is really awesome, really fun. Blight. Most of Blight's add-ons are fun and creative. Undetectable while rushing. You can block pallets when you hit someone out of a rush. Things like that. Fun, creative add-ons. They don't necessarily need to be strong. They're just cool. They add something extra to the power. So, let's talk about the Nemesis's... Is, 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 lots of S's. Nemesis's... Is, <laughs> let's talk about the Tyrants. How about that? Let's talk about the Tyrants Ultra Rares and why they are so not worth being ultra rare. So, the first one is Iridescent Umbrella Badge. And this is a copy and paste directly from the twins. So, survivors are inflicted with the exposed status effect for 12 seconds when using a vaccine. Let me explain why this is unbelievably terrible. <laughs> this is actually the worst excuse for an ultra add-on. I've ever seen. Like, at least the twins add-on, you could ex argue that, okay, well, you know, maybe they kick Victor when you're, they're in front of you. Okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. That can apply in a situation. Now, they've since, they, they, they've since buffed that to 20, but a buff would not fix this add-on at all. And let me explain to you why. So, when a survivor is contaminated and they get the ability to use a vaccine... If they are injured, and they use the vaccine, and they get rid of the contamination, they are not healed. This does not work like the plague's ability. They are not healed. They stay injured. You use a vaccine like a med kit. You can use it at any point during the game, once you've acquired it, and you use it exactly like an item. It has a channel time, and you can use it wherever you want on the map. So... Why apply exposed on a survivor you have no information on their whereabouts for 12 seconds to begin with? Why, why, why would you even do that? Why, why is that an add-on? You don't know where they are, so you can't capitalize on the exposed status effect. And they might actually just be injured. And the most insulting part is that there is a limitation to how many vaccines are in a trial. There are only four vaccines per trial. Not five, not six, and they do not respawn. There is an add-on that lets you remove one vaccine, and it is a very rare add-on. So, <laughs> the chances of you actually having any usage out of this add-on is basically zero. It is, it's so uh, impractical and implausible that it needs to be reworked. So, <laughs> this, this is by far my biggest problem with the add-ons. The second ultra rare is Shattered Stars Badge. Now this is not nearly as bad, and I've used this in a handful of matches, and it actually, it's pretty useful. It actually has a purpose. Uh, I just think that this one is a lot like Soldier's Putty for Huntress, where it's just really underwhelming to be an ultra rare. What this add-on does is it will tremendously increase zombie movement speed for 30 seconds after a generator is repaired. So, tremendously is actually a, a pretty sizable amount in this case. You can stack this with other movement speed add-ons for zombies, and they start to... They, they, they groove, man. They're grooving. They will go after survivors much easier, and they will definitely land a hit. Uh, but of course, you gotta remember two things. One, it needs to be after a generator is repaired, and it lasts for 30 seconds, which, in Dead by Daily terms, is not a significant amount of time. So you're losing one-fifth of the game for this add-on to proc. But, there are only two zombies on the map. And they can be wherever... They so desire, because it's AI control, they might roam into a corner, and I've actually seen a zombie get stuck. When I was playing on the game, it was like my first or second game as Nemesis, a zombie got stuck above a locker on the bottom floor, and it just was there for the whole game. So, yeah, this, this add-on, uh, it's not terrible, 
it has a purpose, but I don't think it's of ultra rare quality. Now, what I had an idea of on stream uh, really stemmed because someone asks, you know, do I think that there are enough zombies? And I said, base power, yeah, there's plenty because they actually, they can pressure the board, they patrol generators basically, they get survivors to do other things. They can be a nuisance, they can harass survivors. Uh, you definitely wouldn't want to add more, more than two in the base power. But what about an add-on? So, I'm going to suggest a change for Eris and Umbrella Badge, and that is just super simple. All it does is it adds one additional zombie. And maybe it slightly increases their detection range so they can find survivors a little bit easier. That's it. That's my add-on. I have infinitely improved it. <laughs> Anything better than exposed for 12 seconds is an improvement by an infinite amount. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to quickly make this video and talk about the add-ons. Uh, most of the Nemesis's add-ons, I can't say it like that, most of the Tyrant's add-ons are actually okay. They remind me a lot of Legion's add-ons, where they're not like super game-changing, but they're not like, you know, like terrible. Like they all have a purpose, they all do something. A lot of his add-ons are statistics where they will increase something by a set amount or reduce it, which is okay. He actually has a really nice, what is it? Is it a, yeah, it's a rare add-on. He also has a very rare add-on. Uh, the rare add-on makes it so you gain undetectable every time you uh, kill a zombie or just whenever a zombie is destroyed in general. So if, it's, uh, if a survivor stuns one with a pallet and kills it, or like with a locker with head on, or you just straight up kill the zombie yourself, you punch it in the face, you use your tentacle attack, you gain undetectable for 15 seconds. This is actually a pretty good add-on. I used it once or twice, I got some good value out of it, I snuck up on a survivor, it was fun. And he has another one which is very similar, it's called NEA Parasite, it's very rare. And when receiving the contamination effect, a survivor suffers from oblivious for 60 seconds. So whenever you get someone infected, they're just oblivious for, for 60 seconds. That's actually pretty good. Uh, so, again, most of his add-ons are pretty mixed. Some are, you know, helpful, some are less helpful, but still decent. Like, some of his commons are actually pretty good. Uh, slightly increases zombie movement speed, for example. Zombies' auras turn yellow for 6 seconds after hitting a survivor. Like, that stuff is good. It is absolutely good. I just think his ultra rares need a bit of a, a tune-up, a bit of a change. Um, but overall, I am incredibly satisfied with this chapter, and you can basically consider this my feedback on the Resident Evil chapter in Dead by Daylight. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any ideas for add-ons, leave them below. See ya!